Let's talk a little bit more about Pascal's principle. This says that if the pressure at one point in an incompressible fluid changed, then the pressure at every other point in the fluid changes by the same amount. So this is a really powerful um, principle that we can use to solve a lot of fluid dynamics problems. So let's do um, a few different examples and then I'm going to leave you with a practice problem. So the water, there's water in a tube and it's shaped like this. And here's an open end over here, open to the atmosphere. This end is closed over here. This height is 40 centimeters. And this height is 100 Oops. centimeters. Obviously not to scale in the least bit. So we're going to say that... Um, this liquid is in hydrostatic equilibrium and the closed tube is not an open region of the container so um, therefore the water that's in this end over here can't rise to an equal height that it wants to so um, if this were open on both sides oops erase that if this were open on both sides um, and this side actually uh, was 40 centimeters and this side was 100 centimeters, they, this side would overflow, basically. Because the water wants to be at equal height. So because it's closed, um, we want to know what is the pressure at this point here? What is the pressure at that point? So we do know something about the pressure here because it's open the pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure we're gonna call that P naught so we have our equation that we um, have that talks about hydrostatic pressure so we have P equals P naught plus rho G D and we've talked about this before. Um, it's derived from a couple of different equations. It talks about the different forces in a container. That's when we had a container that was like this that had a particular part of the fluid and it was talking about buoyant forces and the weight of the fluid. And this is the equation that got derived from all of that work. So the cool thing is that we can actually pretty easily solve this problem because it's just kind of plug and chug. So if we're looking at pressure at the closed end, all we have to do is um, set it equal to P naught, which we know is atmospheric pressure, press plus the row of water, which is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. It's a cubed times gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. Ah, I'm running out of room. Times the difference. So the D in this um, actually is the difference in height here. So we have this is D. So in that case, it is 60 centimeters or 0.6 meters. So P naught, for those of you that don't know this, um, 
Atmospheric pressure is 1.1 times 10 to the fifth pascals. So therefore, if we just um, put that into the calculator, we get that the P at the closed end is equal to 1.07 times 10 to the fifth pascals, which is equal to 1.06 atmospheres. So what that's saying is that the water in the open tube pushes the water in the closed tube up against this top portion here. And consequently, in accordance with Newton's third law, you guys are aware, you know, with every action there's an equal and opposite reaction, so the top of the tube, therefore, then presses down on the liquid with the same magnitude. So that's why the pressure at the top of the closed tube is greater than atmospheric pressure. And then if we talk about Pascal's principle, which we started this video with, if we were to um, compress the air up here above the open tube um, to a pressure of one and a half atmospheres, there would be an increase in a half an atmosphere all the way through this fluid and um, thus our answer for the pressure here at the end of the closed tube would also increase by half of an atmosphere and we would get 1.56 atmospheres instead of our 1.06. So if we want, went from one atmosphere to one and a half atmospheres uh, all of the pressure inside the fluid would increase by a half of an atmosphere, and thus our final answer would also increase by a half of an atmosphere. So my question that I want to leave you guys is... Um, let me draw a little system here. So here... Here I have not necessarily a pipe, but you could call it that, I guess. So if I have water flowing, here, let's make it blue, that's more fun. If I have water flowing down this way, and it's slowly poured into the container until the water level has risen into spots one, two, and three, and the water doesn't overflow from any of the tubes, how do the water depths of the three columns compare? How do they compare? Um, so here are your options. The depth of one is greater than the depth of two is greater than the depth of three. One is less than two is less than three. They're all equal. These two are equal, but this one is greater, and these two are equal, but this one is less. So these are all D1, these are all D2. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 options to choose from. So I want you to come to class um, having an answer for that.